Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for a special edition of the show. Uh, I'm here in Germany, in the Moselle. Um, and what's the town are we in? In Berncastle. Berncastle. Cruise, right? Yeah. Cruise. Okay. I'm here with Dr. Losen. Not Lucen, you know, sp spelled that way. Us Americans say that. Dr. Losen here. Uh, I have Daniel with Dr. Losen, and uh, he's he took me on some tours of the vineyards, and uh, they're pretty steep vineyards. Uh, we went, did a whole bunch of stuff there, and uh, we're waiting on your uncle. He'll join us during during the show. Um, so he's uh, he's he's catching his, well, he had his flight too. I just yeah. flew in today, literally. Like, I didn't even stop at where I'm staying. So we're going to hang out and uh, taste some wines and, and talk about what we did, and uh, we'll go from there. So Daniel, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, tell him, Tell everybody who you are. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'm Daniel. Daniel Emmes is my name. I'm the nephew of Ernst Lozen, the owner of the Dr. Lozen estate. And I am uh, right now responsible for some foreign markets. I'm working in the exports. But um, in, during harvest, I also go back to the production where I started. So I did my apprenticeship at uh, Weingut Dönhoff. I heard he will present this winery soon I'll as well. Be there tomorrow, so that'll be I think that'll be the episode after this week. So I do, so when I release my episodes, it's in order of how I do them. So your episode is the first one from this whole trip, and then Donhoff, and then Tanish, and then I have an interview with an Italian winemaker at Provine, and then I'll do the Provine coverage. So yeah, it's it's first in, first out. <laughs> cool, cool. So we are first in, and yes. um, yeah, so. So the uh, winery, Dr. Lawson, is in our family since 200 years. The, uh, the vineyards are in our family since 200 years. And um, yeah, we have vineyard sites in, yeah. in Bernkastel, Graf, Welen, Erzig and Erden. Mm -hmm. So today we, we visited um, vineyard sites in Welen. In Erden and in Erzig. Yes. In Erzig, we were right on the top of the hills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah. steep vineyards there. Yeah, we, we, we took that. So we drove as far as you could in that one, and uh, then we took the footpath. Yeah. So we're, we're getting ahead of things. So, but yeah, it was, it was cool. I liked it, but I was like, look at the path occasionally look down the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so, like you said, the, the uh, vineyards have been in your family for 200 years, um, but they've been making wine in this area for a very long time, right? Yeah, we are. Um, so this area is known for wine since 2000 years, since the Roman brought the, brought the wine to us. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so we even have a Roman press house we drove by uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in, the Adna, in the Adna Treption. Uh, which is can be dated back uh, to 1780. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty incredible. I mean, you know, I, us Americans, you know, we while we have history in our country, we don't have history like this for thousands of years. We have, you know, we still have a few hundred years, but like where I live in San Antonio, we don't really have a lot of historical. Uh, structures that are still around, we still have them, but like you can see the history, say on the east coast of the United States, you can definitely see his, you know, historical stuff, but it's not like coming here where it's, it's 500, 600, 2000 years of, of history and you guys are surrounded by it. I don't know how, yeah. I don't know if it's just like every day to you, but to us it's like, it's like a novelty to us. <laughs> that's true, that's true. That's uh, Europe and all. It, yeah. On every corner you have some uh, historical sites yeah. and, or some 
you know, the castles. Castle, every yeah. Corner of the yeah, the castle over there. I'm having dinner over there tomorrow night. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there is a lot of a uh, lot of history um, yeah. still. Uh, seen here you can uh, right. see it in, at any corner yeah. so we were talking about um, with the history of this area and the, that 200 years is, is there's a reason for that with Napoleon I actually didn't realize that the, the Napoleonic code was also being taken effective so can you kind of talk about that yeah so um, when Napoleon uh, so uh, previously before Napoleon came, uh, most of the vineyards were owned by the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Napoleon conquered this country, um, he had to pay his soldiers. Okay, so yeah. um, he and his uh, his way to pay his soldiers was to uh, privatize the the land which was owned by the church. And so. 200 years ago, a lot of these vineyards that were formerly owned by the church came into private ownerships. And um, yeah, that was about the time that most of the vineyards went into fam uh, into families like ours. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just made it, I made a an assumption about about the, the church here. I mean, the church always means the Catholic Church, but I guess in I, you, you said that this area uh, this area actually is very heavily Catholic, right? Yeah, we are a, a heavily Catholic area, so uh, that's also why people had a lot of children. Mm -hmm. had a, um, and with the Napoleonic Code or with the with the uh, French heritage system, yeah, um, the parcels of the vineyards, of course, over time got smaller and smaller because every sibling got the same amount of land and therefore the parcels got smaller and smaller and therefore over centuries the yeah the ownership uh, you had to marry other owners of vineyards in order to put enough land together to afford a family yeah, yeah. exactly i think i think our guest is here <laughs> come on in join us yes. hey how you doing outstanding oh my god that was a lot of delays today yeah well, i Crazy. think we have you set up right over or, here or I, or i'll go or over you can there go over there and ernie ernie can yeah you can mine seed there we go I'll, i guess i'll jump off from time there we to go time to get some wines so just go ahead and put the microphone on and let me turn everything else on here all right, so we're going to stop the audio recording for just a second because it won't let me turn that on. Okay. Um, anyway, so <laughs> pleasure to meet you. Thank yes. you for stopping in. You had some flight delays, I heard. Oh, yes, yes. I don't yeah. know what it, what it was, but London City was totally jammed, you know, yeah. they couldn't get in. And so it was a two hours delay to get out there. Right. Every so year the same. I had, um, I actually had some, I, I just flew in today too. Oh, really? So, so London? No, from 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 uh, United States. But, uh, up in the U.S. Uh, but I flew from Dallas to Frankfurt. Oh, Dallas. Um, we Frankfurt, had yeah. a delay f leaving from Dallas because of heavy winds. Oh yes. And then Crazy, um, yeah. uh -huh. my Frankfurt flight to Dusseldorf was fine. There was no mm -hmm. no issues with that. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, I literally had just drove here, <laughs> <laughs> and I was a little bit late. Oh, okay, um, no problem. So I, I mean, I did sleep a little bit on the plane, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. I did I did stop off at one of the rest areas and took a little power yeah, nap because yeah, sure, sure, I was sure. like, oh yeah. I gotta oh, pull oh. over. <laughs> oh, 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 yes, 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 that's better than like this. And now I'm here, the adrenaline's mm -hmm. kicked in. So, <laughs> so um, anyway, Daniel was starting to, hey, we just started, so Daniel was starting to do the um, mm -hmm. uh, kind of a history of, of the area. Mm -hmm. um, why don't we kind of jump back and we can kind of talk yes, about sure, you sure, and yeah, how sure, you sure, sure. Uh, fit okay, into this okay, whole okay, thing. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. No problem. Uh, I mean, I hear, I hear it's in the family, so. Uh, yeah, sure, sure, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, yes, it's a it's a family estate, you know, which is kind of two hundred years in the family, you know, mm -hmm. and so um, and basically, since two hundred years, you grew up Riesling here, uh, yeah, because this is basically the main rival here. Like in Burgundy, you have Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, and here, it's the Riesling, the yeah, the king of the grapes, right? Or yeah, the queen of the grapes, mm -hmm. uh, um, and. But you guys, you do other grapes, but you're almost yeah, but, all Riesling. But but here in the Mosul, we do, I mean, 
I mean, 98% it, it's going to be Riesling, right? So yeah. we have another estate down on the Rhine River, mm -hmm. uh, the Villa Wolf estate. And here we're doing all the other grape varieties, which are basically known uh, as the Rhine varietals, you know, that's okay. Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir Rosé. We don't do Silvana, which is also a very traditional grape variety on the Rhine. Um, but we do also Skubert Stramina. Mm -hmm. That's basically all these grape varieties you find also along um, uh, on the Rhine in, in Elsass and then the, on the German side in Baden, on the Rhine okay. and Rhine Pfalz. Along the Rhine, you know, in the south, that is sort of what, that was all the traditional grape varieties, beside of Riesling too. Okay. Uh, Riesling is all right. sure also crowned there. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, this has been the family for a while. Um, and uh, Daniel was telling me that um, because of lots of kids, um, mm -hmm. there's also lots of marriages that happened and things kind of combine. And, yes, um, yes, sure, sure. That I means that's very similar, like you find it in Burgundy. You yeah. know? A lot of families. I mean, you know, here it's a, it's a narrow valley, you know? Yeah. Um, pretty isolated, you know? Right. So you have more or less of 2,000 years of inbreed here. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so a lot of. Yeah, you know, in the villages you see the major names, you know, and they're all, you know, married together, you know, and so yeah. it was basically, as he explained, that this, uh, historically um, the vineyards have been very expensive and the easiest way to expand was marrying, you know, right. the daughter to, uh, of another estate owner, you know, to get more vineyards, you know, yeah. because the vineyards have been a hundred years ago very expensive here, you know, like Burgundy, you know, we, we have ridiculous prices nowadays yeah. in Burgundy, you know, I mean, I don't know, 50 million yeah. uh, euros for for a hectare, mm -hmm. which is two and a half acres uh, for a Crown Cru, you know, yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Uh, but these prices have been very similar uh, turn of the century, around mm -hmm. 1900 here. You know? Okay. So 100 gold mark for a square meter of Vela Nazon, you know, if you look to the, you know, 100 gold mark, nowadays the buying power for 100 gold mark would be nowadays also similar to 5,000 euros a square meter. You know? Okay. One vine is yeah. on a square meter. Wow. So, um, I mean, we talked about a lot when mm -hmm. we were going through all this stuff. One of the things we talked about was um, uh, for a long time you, there was no grafting, but now it's becoming more. more uh, well, we are um, one of the very, very few areas, or the only one in Germany, but also one of the very, very, I mean, more or less the only area which has never hit by phylloxera. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to plant. Uh, I mean, crafted wines, right. American rootstocks. So we still have mm, the middle Mosul is still phylloxera free. Mm -hmm. The area was never attacked by phylloxera. So a lot of our vineyards are still on original rootstocks, and especially the old ones, which we don't rip out. If we find an individual dead wine, we replant it again with original rootstocks. Yeah. Know? We are where we do our own cuttings from the oldest okay. plants, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, that's another thing I hadn't really realized that Phylloxera really had never hit here. This this area, yeah, yeah. that's a huge exception, you know, it's a yeah. huge exception. All of Europe was destroyed by, by Phylloxera. Yeah. But here, the reason is because of the soil, you know, the slate right, soil, yeah. the slate, slate soil, uh, basically Phylloxera can't live in there. Okay, yeah, we got to see three different soils because mm. we went to three different areas. Yeah. We saw the blue, the red, and the slate, the and then the volcanic, soil. yeah, the volcanic. Mm. volcanic. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty amazing. I mean, like I've read the books about you know the the vineyards and how steep they are, and and, and mm -hmm. the, the sun reflecting off of the the river, and the river is the mm -hmm. is you know helps moderate the climate and all that. But to actually see these vineyards up close and mm -hmm. just how steep they are, I mean, it's they are steep. it's pretty it's pretty amazing, and, yes. you, and you have to hand harvest these things. You can't oh, really yeah. all the work, it. Yeah. I mean, more or less, all the work is hand hand work. You know, I mean, they have now little crawlers which you can use where they have they they are tied on a winch. You know, yeah, we saw um, those, right? We saw this, like, you know? Yeah, yeah. So these blue ones, the little blue mm -hmm. crawlers, you know, on a winch. You know, that helps. You know, to to reduce a little bit the labor costs. But the labor costs are t still twice to three times as um, much as you if you will go to the fulls or where you have flat soil, you know, okay. where you can measurize everything, you know. Because mm -hmm. here the the harvest will be always by hand. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah, it probably it will probably always mm. be that way unless that something. Is, and harvest is already a third of the total labor cost of, mm. of a vineyard. You know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it, it can be very expensive. I mean, you know, even in the United States, you know, the labor for for harvest uh, and just just regular oh, yeah. vineyard labor can be very difficult. Oh, you know, very difficult because you know, especially with this kind of new laws you are implementing in the US yeah. because you know we we have a winery in Oregon you know mm -hmm. uh, where we pr produce Pinot Noir and Pinot Noir you have to you know if you want to high quality Pinot Noir you have to hand harvest it yeah. you know? it's get very difficult you know to find people you know? right even uh, the contract I mean the, everything in the US are going through contractors anyway right but even the contractors you know it's, it's not, I don't know how they are going to handle this in the future you know because I mean that's only the Mexicans who, who want yeah, to do it. Yeah, so it can be it can be definitely difficult, uh, very challenging for for us over there too. Yes. Um, so we went to what was the first one we went to? To Vienna on Blue Slate. Yeah. yeah. So that was the that's basically the sundial, and we mm. saw the sundial. Yeah. Um, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you were telling me that the sundial is a, it signifies something about the vineyard. So what if, if there's a sundial in the vineyard? What one of the things that it, it well, I mean, the sundial works only in a south facing vineyard, mm -hmm. as you know. Okay. You know, I mean, a north facing vineyard, you don't have to put a sundial in there, you know? <laughs> it doesn't work, you know. Yeah, so but that means if you have a sundial in a vineyard, you can imagine this must be a hundred percent south facing vineyard because if. If, if the, the sun is coming out at eight o'clock in the morning and and dawns at six in the evening, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to the full time of a sundial, it has to be hundred percent south facing. Right. You know, and the south facing vineyards are the best concrete. Right. So it indicates this is a how sun that is a hundred percent south facing vineyard, and it indicates then and what the hundred percent south facing vineyard is always the best concrete. You know? Right. Yeah. Concrete vineyards, you know. Yeah, and I didn't realize that. You know, mm. I just I just knew like that, mm. that it was named the sundial because it was a sundial. They're like, okay, yeah, well, a because the sundial. Yeah, is yeah but, right but the significance of the sundial. Well, I mean, did, no, the significance the significance was it was a donation of Yodokos mm -hmm. Prim. You know. Okay. I mean that was I mean that was the base of it. You know, he spent he was not married. He we spent all his money on charity. Okay. And that was a big charity thing. You have okay. to imagine, and it was 1842. People didn't have watches in these yeah, days. Right. Even the, I mean, people, I mean, the, also the villagers have been very poor, you know. Mm -hmm. So there was also no, I mean, even the church tower didn't have a clock, you know. So that means it was a big thing for people, such a donation, that they suddenly, at least during the day, had the time. Right. right. Yeah. So that was the that is basically the base of this sundial. Okay. It was yeah. a donation. The sundial in Celting was also donated by JJ, uh, not Yodokos from you know. Okay. It was a donation to the village. He bought the old church and he built an elderly people home in it. Right. He bought the old monastery here in Burncaster and put an an old people's home uh, out of it. You know. So he that was a it's a very charity thing. You know the the the. the the, um, the 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 sundial was a charity. There we you know? go. Speaking of the sun. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the sun. Sorry about that. Yeah, it was raining the entire time, so I figured we'll be we'll sit in front of the window. It'll be okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, we'll well, we'll deal with it. It'll yes. it'll be okay. The audio is more important than the video on this, yes, honestly. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so from that point of view, it was a donation. But mm -hmm. okay, he he put it into he put it into. Uh, and he put it into uh, you know that was a pretty pretty nice donation you know right days, exactly you know? here we go uh, we'll play with this anyway um while I'm messing with the with the exposure um so yeah, we went we went to that one, and that was the blue slate, right? Yeah, that was the blue yes, slate. Yes. So, so yes, yes, shall sure. we uh, shall we start yeah. with a Let's with start. a blue slate? Yes, wine then. So is uh, that basically what it says on the bottom? Yes, yes, that's uh, well, it says it in German, Blauschiefer, right. but okay. uh, in the English market, in the English market, it's, it's blue slate. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mike. My knowledge of German is very limited to basically wine terms and things yeah. I've seen on TV and the movies. So, um, 
I mean, I'm, I'm happy I'm able to say Danka to somebody, and, <laughs> and I found out that, um, I mean, I kind of, I guess I probably knew this, but um, instead of saying good to Morgan, everyone just says mm. Morgan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Morning, like like yeah, we say, morning. we say morning to morning, you know. Yeah. We say good. morning. I, I morning. actually almost, I almost never say good morning. I don't mm. know why. Because in a lot of time, a lot of times when I've uh, when, where I've been with people and you have like a, a you know a morning shift. I'm a 24 hour person. Like I'm naturally this way, regardless of the mm. time of day, and I can like get no sleep and still be all happy. Mm. But some people just are not morning people, and they go, oh. so I never say good to them because it's not a good morning. I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> anyway, so I stop saying good. I just say morning to everybody. So it's just kind of funny that when I got here, oh, it's the same tradition. Everyone mm. says morning to each other <laughs> yeah, instead yeah, of good sure. morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. But uh, okay, so this came. Uh, this is a this is a wine. Oh, sorry, I put. Uh, need it. Sorry. Let's, let's stay here. This is what we call our estate riesling. You know. Okay. Um, because it bears only the estate name on the label, Dr. Lozen, you know, okay. Dr. Lozen Riesling. Um, because we have also uh, wines where we, which have the vineyard name on there, you know, like Vela and right. you know. Okay. And so these are then the Crown Cru vineyard. As uh, as soon the wine is coming from a Crown Cru vineyard, we put the vineyard name on it, you know. Okay. Everything which is not Crown Cru rated. We don't use the vineyard name. We put only Dr. Lawson Okay. Name, you know, so we we, we have eight Grand Cru vineyards, you know, mm -hmm. and we put only these eight Grand Cru vineyards on the label, you know. Okay. And all the on all the second growth and third growth rated vineyards on this old map, you oh. see it, the all the dark brown spots here. These right. are the Grand Cru vineyards. The medium brown spots are the second growth vineyard, and the the pale brown spots are the third growth vineyard, you know. Okay. And so the, all the second and third growth vineyard, we don't use the vineyard name. We blend it together only by the soil type. We have these three soil types. And so on everything which is from blue slate, second or third growth vineyards, you know, are going into the Dr. Lothen Riesling blue slate. You know? Okay. You know? And so this is all blue slate from Burncastle all the way to Zelding. And this whole rim is all blue slate, you know? Yeah. And so that's all these second growth and third growth vineyards from Burncastle, Clarkville, and Zelding, and you know, we're just going into the blue slate. You know? Okay. And, um, you, you, you're putting trucking on there. Um, mm. Is this something that you've done for a while? Because I know, like with 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 people like people in the United States, and we it can be kind of hard to figure out if something's going to be sweet or well, dry. Yeah, or... but you know, but there is uh, there was always a tradition with riesling, you know, um, that riesling was produced in different styles, you know, mm -hmm. by taste, you know. So if, how how should somebody differentiate it? You know, if you don't put dry on it, you know. Right. If you if you produce only one style of wine, you don't have to put dry on it. You know. I mean, Chardonnay from from Burgundy. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's a dry wine because there is no tradition for sweet wines in right. in Burgundy. Mm -hmm. You know, so they don't have to put dry on it because it's all the wines are dry. You know. Right. But here. Here we always had a tradition, a very long-standing tradition, to doing also fruity style or sweet style wines, mm -hmm. you know? And to differentiate the sweet style wines from the dry wines, we put on the dry wines trocken. Okay. And all the wines which have not trocken or dry on the label are then sweet. You right. Know? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that makes only sense for, for, for areas which have the tradition to do both. Okay. And you have it in France too, in the Loire, for example, Chenin Blanc, you yes. know? Can be and they call it moyeux, is sweet and mm -hmm. um, demi sec, demi -sec yeah. and sec. You know, mm -hmm. so they have the tradition there too. As soon you have a tradition for making different styles and different tastes with wines, you have to put it on the label. Otherwise, okay. it's confusing. It's how confusing, should people yeah. how should people know that this is dry <laughs> right. and this is sweet? You know, because um, even even sometimes they don't put something on there. And what I just tell people is. What I look at, if I'm not 100% certain, um, is I just look at the alcohol level. Yes. If it's a lower alcohol, a, yeah, most likely it's going to be a sweeter style. Yeah, that is, that is also know. good. If you if you don't have it, I mean, if you're not sure and there's not written on it, look at the label, yes. A higher alcohol style is rather dry yeah. and the lower alcohol style is rather a little bit more fruity and, you know, with a little bit of sweetness. Yeah. So. I think the sun's going behind the, the hill, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, not yeah, quite. No, That's not, right. Not yet. It's we're a we're good. Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm thinking about things. I'm, I'm looking at everything at the same time. Yes. Um, so, uh, um, yeah. Um, and then well, that you makes also it, I mean, and, and, and it yeah. makes totally sense because yeah. you know. I mean, sorry. I mean, people. There are people who want to drink a dry wine. It's written on it. You know. Yeah. So I think it's much more complicated for people. 
um, who are doing dry and sweeter style wines in America. There are a lot of wines are sweet, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't put it put it on they the don't label. Put it on the label no. they, they put it, they 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 tell you that's dry, you know, but it is not it's dry, sweet. you know. <laughs> yeah. And so from that point of view, for the people uh, who want explicit uh, dry wine, I think it's a good thing that they have. They look at it, and in Germany, it's regulated by law, mm -hmm. you know. So you're not allowed. That is the the other problem in, in say in other countries, you know. Therefore, there, there is no regulation. Right. Hey, you can also call your your wine with thirty gram residual sweetness. You can call it dry, you know. Right. Because there's no law, you know. Mm -hmm. But in Germany, we have a law, and it is very strictly regulated, you know. Okay. So if you put, if you want to put a dry sticker or dry on the label, it is you have to prove it first by okay. a committee, you know. A committee taste the wine. And take the analysis and check it, and then, um, then you can be allowed to put dry on it. So it's very strictly regulated. Okay. You know? And if it was like uh -huh. not, if it was like the equivalent of a, a demi sec, you put half chalking on there. Well, or, you can yeah. put half chalking on it, but um, we don't do it because everything which is not dry is for us. It's just fruity sweet. style. Okay. You know? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, and do you use also the? Um, I did, Forgive my. We, we use here yeah. now an old term, which is called fine herb for Germany. Okay. You know? Fine herb is the old uh, expression of um, uh, demi sec or halb trocken. Okay. You know? So we use a fine herb, but I think we also, I think we gave up the fine herb because it's a little confusing. You know, the okay. people, it's in between something. You know, it's not really sweet. So um, the fine herb was basically very much the traditional. Okay. style of wine say 40 50 years ago you know wines all had been a little bit more than dry in the receipt sweetness that was the traditional style so around to between you know around 20 gram receipt sweetness you know okay and that in the old days they called it fine herb you know and then the 71 wine law changed it into halb you know okay but now we are again allowed to use the old expression fine herb you know um, so some people use the old expression fine herb now, uh, but we uh, said, well, this is also confusing people. It's a German word. How should the people know, know about it now? We call it tradition now. Our okay. fine herb, our medium dry wines, we call it tradition now. Okay. Um, and do you use any of the um, uh, ripeness indicators here? The yeah, yeah. Well, and that type of stuff. Uh, not for the dry wines. Okay. No, no. For the dry wines, uh, we are a member of the VDP. You know, mm -hmm. the Fine Wine Crow Association. To make it more simple to the consumer, we said no predicate, no cabinet spade is out. Is for dry wines. Okay. Only riesling dry or grand cru dry okay. or village dry. You mm -hmm. know. Um, and if you use a credit card like Cabinet Spade as an auslaser, this has to be always sweet. You know? Okay. So That's that means credit card wines are always sweet with the VDP people now, you know? Got Cabinet it. Spade is an auslaser, you know? Because it was also confusing for people. There's an auslaser sweet and there's an auslaser dry. Right. You know? And then I said, oh, why, why is an auslaser dry when it is a sweet wine usually? It was also a contradiction anyway, you know, auslaser mm -hmm. dry, you know, or cabinet dry or schmerlaser dry. Right. So I think the solution with the, with the, with the VDP to make it a little bit easier for the, for the consumer, you know, here with the dry wine, we concentrate on the vineyard, you know, okay. or a village, you know, or only Dr. Logan Riesling dry. Um, as soon as we use a predicate, cabinet schmerlaser auslaser, the VDP said, look, Keep keep the credit card for the traditional sweet wines, you know. All right, good. That's good to know because mm -hmm. even I'm conf I've, even I've been confused. Yeah. Um, and I've looked at a lot of them like mm -hmm. it's low alcohol, so it should be it should be sweet. Mm -hmm. But I just haven't kept up with that. Mm -hmm. If I see that it's going to be sweet instead of like having mm -hmm. a, a dry outlay. But this is only with the VDP members. The VDPs, you know? yeah. So, so you gotta look, VDP you gotta look for this. Yeah, for the eagle here. Yeah, I gotta look for that. No, so it's you still not can with, have a dry outlay. So. Yes. Yeah. But people who are not VDP members, they don't have to stick to this laws, you know. Right. Okay. So they still do cabinet and spade with a dry or even house with a dry and so on. You know, okay. So from that point of view. So if you don't see the eagle and they, they, don't, they, don't, member. they, they, yes. yeah, they don't specify member. dry. Yes, yes. Just... VDP member is basically, uh, as I said, it's the fine uh, wine, um, you know, um, uh, uh, association, you know. Okay. Um, and so from that point of view, we try to make it a little more simple, you know, for the Good, easier yeah. to understand for the consumer. Huh? Let's get to this wine. Um. Yes. Yeah. This is, as I said, this is our dry estate yeah. listing. 
This is only from wine. only from a blue slate soil, from mm -hmm. this kind of soil, you know, which we have here between Burncastle, you know, I showed you between Burncastle, between Burncastle and Seltingen, you know, that's all blue slate right. from the second growth and third growth vineyards. All the dry wines with us are produced also in a very traditional style. So we produce them in um, in the old traditional oak barrels. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We ferment them in the old traditional oak barrels, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 liter size. You know? okay. And then on natural yeast, indigenous yeast, you know. And then after fermentation, we uh, sulfur, top it up, you know, and then we leave it for 12 months on the full yeast, you know, we are not wrecking, you know. Okay. We leave it on the full yeast, on the gross yeast, you know, and leave it there for 12 months minimum, you know. And then we're going to bottle it and wreck it and bottle it, you know. So this is an old winemaking way of dry wines, um, which my grand grandfather did. You know, my right. grand grandfather did from my father's side, did only dry wines, and he produced let the wines very very long on the full yeast, up to eight years in the barrel. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. And these these are the big barrels. These are not one thousand, two thousand, yeah. and three thousand. So you're not you know? using barrique and you know. No, barrique never had a tradition here in this yeah. area. Barrique is a French thing, you know. Yeah, and that's why well, you're not. It was get always the... old barrels, big and old barrels. Yeah. You know, foudre. They right. Call, yeah. The French call them foudre. foudre. Yeah. Foudre. We call them foodah. Huh? Okay, mm -hmm. and that's why you don't. You're not getting oak qualities out of it. So no, no, a, no. We a, don't want to have yeah. oak. No, it would the destroy oak. This. The oak doesn't work with uh, with the acidity of yeah. the riesling, because you have to see it that way. In France, they lower the acidity by malolactic fermentation. You know, mm -hmm. you know. That means it has very and oak. You know, it's nothing has as tannins. You know, mm -hmm. and tannins are an acidity. You know, right. Tannins is an acidity. You know, the acidity of the oak. You know. And so in these tenants, this acidity plus the high acidity of the Riesling, you know, this acidity plus acidity, that doesn't work, you know. Right. So it works with wines which are low in acidity, okay. then mm -hmm. you add through the oak, you eat, uh, uh, um, you add some tenants, which is acidity, and that gives more stability to the wine and better aging potential. You know? Right. But for us, it would bite, you know. This, yeah, because acidity plus more acidity that makes no sense. At all. And I don't even think oak flavors would go well with this. Either. Yeah, and it would, I did, and, and Riesling is an aromatic grape variety, you know. Yeah. And the oak flavors are what pretty much you know would I mean correlate with with the fruit aromas, you know. Right. You know, so it would overlay over over you know overlay the fruit aroma. So that is so what we want is the micro oxidation through the through the through the through the. Um, through the barrel, you know, which gives the wine more complexity, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, we don't want to have the oak flavors, you know, we only want the micro oxidation to get more complexity in right. the wine, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this this wine already, I mean, this is this is really mm -hmm. nice. Yes, you know? it's a beautiful wine. It's very, very, uh, we, it's also very popular. It's an extremely popular uh, wine here mm -hmm. in Germany, especially with a, with um, as wine by the class, you know. Right. Okay. Yeah. This is this in the would be a great business, by the glass mm -hmm. for a restaurant. Yes, they love it. You know, just like a nice collection of fruit, really great acidity to it. You know, mm -hmm. it gives it that great structure yeah. on it. Um, you know, I had a I had a fruit called a jackfruit the other day, mm -hmm. and it was like jackfruit. Really? It's called jackfruit. It's a tropical fruit. Well, I know it's basically yes, it's jackfruit. It's a yeah, yeah, it's, it's, huge. A, it's, yeah, it's very much used for 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 vegetarian cooking. Yeah, you know? mm. and it's so almost it tastes like... a little bit. I mean, I had once uh, in an Indian restaurant that mm -hmm. was uh, in Canada. You know, I really thought I have. I, because I, the, the, the chef I know very well and the owner, you know, and later I said, oh my God, that was a real nice uh, uh, pork, um, 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 you know, this masala, you know, pork. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, well, I don't know, what, you, what did you eat? I said, well, wasn't it pork? He said, no, mm -hmm. it was not pork, that was jackfruit. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah, it is, it is used for the vegetarian cuisine as meat compensation. Yeah, you know? mm. uh -huh. but the fruit flavor on it was just like mm. every tropical fruit rolled into mm. one. It's mm. just like I mm. mean, I got all kinds of different mm. fruit flavors, and I joked with the person and was like, "Next time I'm doing a blind tasting, and I get like." Tropical fruit. Mm -hmm. like, it's jackfruit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not quite, but it had it had a lot of that. You know, mm -hmm. just just like a whole bunch of different fruits all at once. I'd never had it. It was really delicious. Mm -hmm. um, 
and uh, yeah, they're huge. Um, I had it in San Antonio just the other day. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was yeah. it was interesting. It was really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, not that this has jackfruit in it, but definitely mm -hmm. has you know a good combination mm -hmm. of fruit flavors mm -hmm. and aromas. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, uh, reasoning is the, the typical for aromas for, for for reasoning is basically uh, green apple, white peach, stone fruit aromas. Mm -hmm. you know? Stone yeah. fruit aromas are very typical for, yeah. for reasoning. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I had one master saw me say if it smells like a fruit cup and tastes mm -hmm. like a fruit cup, it's probably reasoning. Mm -hmm. Or at least, mm -hmm. at least it should be in your. It should be in one of your. Your it should be like mm -hmm. in your area of what you're going to go for. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. don't don't ignore that. It, it might be something else because mm -hmm. other wines can present similar yeah. similar combinations, but. Mm -hmm. Don't don't leave out Riesling. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's, but it's mostly stone fruit. Yeah, mostly you know, stone fruit. Stone fruit yeah. Yeah. Aromas, you know? yeah, this is this is really nice. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Mm. So we're going to continue with the best of the year. I have here two Vilna's. Can you do that one next? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good? Yeah. I'll get that closer to you. So next wine is the Vilna Sonnenburg GG. All right. And can you explain what GG is to my viewers? I know yes. what it is, but <laughs> <laughs> my viewers may not know what a GG mm. is. Um, uh, GG means Großes Gewächs. And you press away better than I can. Großes <laughs> Gewächs, uh, which is basically the direct translation of Konkru into German, you know? Okay. But it works also with the English translation, which means great growth, you know? Great growth, okay. Uh, English could uh, um, um, uh, translate um, Grand Cru to great growth. The mm -hmm. German translation is Großes Gewächs. In this case, both works, you know? And that's only the shortening of great growth or Closest correct, you know. Okay. And it indicates basically that you see here's the GG. Yep. It indicates that the vineyard on the label is a Kronkru vineyard, you know. Okay. So I mean, you can't remember three thousand different vineyard names, okay. and not all the vineyards <laughs> are Kronkru. Right. It's not necessarily if the vineyard name is on the label that this is a Kronkru vineyard, you know. Right. And to make it easier to the customer to indicate, you know. This vineyard, you know, even that he doesn't understand what it means and so, but he can always say, oh, GG means this is a Grand Cru vineyard, you know. Okay. That makes it easy for the consumer, you know. And we were talking about the, these Grand Cru vineyards, yeah. like the best parts yeah. of them are, in the, are actually yeah. closer to the river up to about mid, about midway. Um, because, of, because of how the river mm -hmm. and the sunlight in the river, how it all... And the elevation. And the elevation. It's the right, elevation. Yeah. Uh, it is basically the, what we call... Uh, the three microclimate factors, which okay. which creates the um, the microclimate in the vineyard, and the microclimate in the vineyard is the most important, you know, um, uh, say um, uh, influence to the quality of the wine. Um, that is basically first the you know, the steepness of the vineyard, you know, the mm -hmm. inclination, right. the inclination of sunshine into the vineyard. As steeper it is, as right. more direct inclination of sunshine into the soil. And then the soil is warmer. You can say a 100% steep vineyard collects two to three times more sunshine, you know, as a flat vineyard, you know. Mm -hmm. Then you have the elevation, you know, as lower the elevation, as more close to the river, as warmer because you have the, the moderation of the river, of the water to the vineyard, you know. Um, so, and as higher, if you go up to the, you know, where the forest is, you know, yes. then we're talking about 300 meters of elevation. The Mosul is 110 meters above sea level, you know, okay. up the other way up to the forest is 400 meter above sea level. So you have an elevation of 300 meters, so the lower ones are much warmer okay. than the higher ones because they're the colder winds up there, everything is much colder up there, you know? Right. So that means that's an influence to the ripeness too. Where it is warmer, you get better ripeness, you know? So you have the inclination, the elevation, you know? Um, and then the exposure. As more south facing, as more sunshine again. And so all, the whole microclimate is about accumulating warmness and sunshine, you know? Okay. Exposure, that means if you have a 100% south facing vineyard, you have sunshine from morning to evening, from 8 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the evening, you know. So that is the reason that a uh, 100% south facing vineyard, 100% steep, and as 
more close to the river, these are the best Grand Cru's, huh? Okay. You know? But then if they're turning west or east or even to, I mean, north, it's, it's too cold, you can't do anything yeah. there, you know? But then even, so from that point of view, exposure is also important. North, northwest, or south, southwest, southeast, you know? Um, so that is the three microclimatic factors, you know, you okay. have in the vineyard, you know? Um, elevation, exposure, and inclination, you know? Very nice, yeah. Mm. Um, again, seeing this in person is way better than trying mm. to read it in a book and understand mm. it. I mean, you can kind of understand it in a book, but to see mm. it in person is just mm. is pretty amazing. Um, and, you know, we're walking through these vineyards, and I, I kind of alluded to before you got here, um, mm. it wasn't this one. Um, mm. It was farther up. It was, uh, oh, was, the, was in Erzig? In Erzig, yeah. Yeah, Erzig, yeah. 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 Where were we on that, that footpath? Yeah, the little footpath. We, oh, we yeah, took, yeah, yeah. To but the, isn't it amazing? To this, the little, this valley, what you find then yeah. in there, you know? To the and light. the only access to this valley is this little footpath, you know? Yeah. And you have to huh? carry everything with baskets or backpack to this to, to, to do all your stuff there. Mm -hmm. It's just it's incredible and know, all the amount great. of work and labor that has mm -hmm. to go and, and, and to do these things. It's not, you know, it's not, you know, you're not in a flat valley in California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where you can tractor yeah. everything, which is nothing wrong with that, you know. No, no. But um, you know, you, there's 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 you know, some easier things in other areas and just seeing seeing what the work you all mm -hmm. have to do. Well, to, it's, to get this. it's very labor intense, you know. Yeah. It's very labor intense, you know. That is, uh, uh, people are not aware how much work is in uh, in, in a glass of wine, you know, right. in a bottle of wine, you know, from here, you know. Right. Lots of labor costs. As I said, that's three times as much, you know. You, we say if you have a flat vineyard and you can machinize everything, you know, you have something like, uh, yeah, uh, something like uh, uh, two hundred including mechanical harvest, you know, you have 200 man hours per acre, you know? Okay. No? 200 man hours per acre. Here in the steep slopes, we talk about 600 man hours per acre, you know? Yeah. You know? So we it's have three lot. times as much on man hours, you know, we have to invest into the vineyard work um, as if you have a flat vineyard where you can machinize everything, you know, okay. with, with tractors and, you know, harvesters or whatever, you know. So with the, with this vineyard, um, mm -hmm. we've got the blue slate. We've yes. got everything this, else. This is a very famous Concru vineyard. You know, I told you the sundial. It was mm -hmm. uh, Jodo Gosprum who built 1842 the sundial, and then pretty soon the people called the vineyard surrounding the sundial. They called it all the sundial vineyard. You know, right? And in this year, you see, here's Velen, and here it is 100% south facing slope. The whole slope. This is the longest, the largest south facing slope of the whole Mosul. You know. And so that's the reason it's all Corn Cruise here, you know, because okay. it's 100% south facing, you know, it's all south facing vineyards here, this whole strip, yeah, you know. And um, so, and this is a very famous one, you know, it's all blue slate here, um, but Vilna Zonra is extremely steep, you know, um, very old vineyard. This vineyard is more than 130 years old, you know, on their own roots, uncrafted vines, you know, original rootstocks. More than 130 year old roots, you know. It's a very, this vineyard is already in our in our, in, in our property since uh, 1911, you know, mm -hmm. with the marriage of my great grandfather to a prim girl, you know. Mm -hmm. And so since 1911, it is in our property. So it's already 108 years with us, you know, in, right. in our family. But I can track it another 30 years, you know. So that I can say it's minimum 130 years old, this one, you know, 130 year old uncrafted wines, you know, and here the same winemaking, it's, um, we, we, we harvest only 100% healthy fruit, you know, we don't allow any botrytis, you know, no, no, noble mm -hmm. rot, we take the noble rot out and make noble sweet wines with it, right. but for our dry wines, we want 100% healthy grapes, you know. And then same winemaking here, we put the wines, uh, let them ferment in these old traditional food barrels, you know, on indigenous yeast. And they stay minimum one to two years in the barrel on the full yeast, on the gross yeast before we bottle it. You know? Okay. And with that, do you do any type of batonage or you just let it sit No, no, there? no batonage. No, no batonage. Okay. No, we only let it sit there. We okay. don't want to batonage because the batonage kills the yeast. We want to keep the yeast alive and that, that creates a reductive environment in the barrel okay. and that works very well against the micro oxidation, you know. So we get all, you don't get oxidation through the barrel because the, the yeast which are still alive uh, and the reduction they produce, you know, works against the oxidation, you know. 
but we get all the positive things of the barrel, but without oxidation. Okay. Mm. All right. So you get a good balance between yeah. everything. All yeah, right. That's exactly. Nice. This is spectacular. Yeah. It's very. Right. It's it said the Vilna Sonnenuhr with this blue slate is said it makes the the Vilna Sonnenuhr is the, the the most elegant Grand Cru okay. of, of the Middle Mosel. You know, it makes very elegant, very delicate. You know, wines. You know. Um, um, it's a little bit like Romani Conti. It's also the most elegant wine of all the others, you know, like the Richbu or Latache, you know. It's the most elegant wine. Like like the Romani Conti in, in Burgundy, this Vilna Sonnenuhr is the most, produces the most, and you see there's a beautiful elegance and finesse and delicatesse, you know. It's very feminine, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like a, you know, ballerina, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. I even get like a, um, the, it's hard. It's, it, it's the word I want to use is probably not the best word, but like prickly. It's like it's the acidity. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not a. It's not a. a, a um, it's not bubbles. It's not. It's not. It's not it's, a. It's uh, a very delicate acidity. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, very delicate. Very elegant. Very very very. Yeah, pure. You know. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a purity in, in the in the acidity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's it's, it's right there. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, it's it's a spectacular wine. Especially the 17 Vilna Sonora show is so nice this year, you know. It's really great, you know. It's so, absolutely beautiful, you know. Yeah, with 17, was there anything spectacular or unusual? It was unusual a very good it? vintage, but mm -hmm. very small yields, you know. So okay. you have a good concentration in the 17 vintage, you know. And the 17 wines, you have a great concentration because the yield was half of normal, you know. So okay. we, got, we had spring frost, you know. Um, spring frost since oh my god I don't know I don't remember anymore having a spring frost you know so the last spring frost we had in the 60s you know hmm, but okay. 17 we had the first time um, pretty 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 hard spring frost just when the the butt break was already okay that far you know yeah and destroyed half of the fruit uh, half of the the, the shoots you know? right so that means resulted in half of a okay. year you know. But what we got was very, very good, you know. Weather-wise, over say the past ten, twenty years, have you seen anything for for you that's that's a little different, or is it pretty much? Yeah, well, stable? I mean, we all suffer, uh, not suffer. I wouldn't say suffer. We 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 definitely don't suffer from global warming, you know, because we are so far north. Mm -hmm. If anybody gains from the global you. warming, that's <laughs> yeah, us, right? Yeah, right, yeah. Because in the old days, with my dad or my with my grandfather. In 10 years, they get only three vintages right, mm -hmm. no? Three vintages only right in 10 years. Now, can you believe they had to live from these few vintages, which right. have been right, but very nice. But there have been three vintages, nearly undrinkable, three vintages mediocre, and three type, three vintages ripe and nice, you know, and good, you know? Right. So it was very difficult for them in these days, you know, to survive, you know, and to make uh, a living, you know? We get now every year our fruit ripe, but not overripe, and that okay. is the difference. And that the other areas are suffering more from global warming, especially in the south. You know, mm -hmm. there they get. And that's the reason that now wines from the Rhone, you know, Chateau Neuf du Pap or Spain, Italy, even Bordeaux now, fourteen and a half, fifteen percent alcohol. You know, yeah, and easily, more, you know? yeah, easily, yeah. easily. And we still, we, I mean, if for us, is something overripe, then. Then it's twelve point five alcohol, you know, and twelve point five is internationally still low, you know? right? Yeah. <laughs> so from that point of view, so that's a good thing. We get everything right, but mm -hmm. not overripe, you know. So that means we can make every year a nice wine, you know, but not. I mean, the dry wines are between eleven point five and twelve point five. That is not right. really. I right? just. I mean, still for a lot of people in Italy or France, they say what eleven point five. That's a little bit, you know. Or in California, can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. they get fifteen yeah. and a half, sixteen. Yeah, yeah. and so <laughs> from know. that point of view, we gain from that. But we see, sure, we see that in comparison to thirty years ago, right. we are an average one to one point five potential alcohol um, um, higher nowadays. You know, okay. but that means it's not ten anymore; it's eleven point five, which right. is much nicer than ten. You know, with right. ten, nine point five potential alcohol maximum sugar ripeness. You know. Um, hmm, that was uh, more difficult to make a nice dry wine, you know. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, is is your weather patterns are they pretty consistent, or do you see a lot of wild swings? Oh, well, yeah. You have. I think the weather is a bit more extreme. You know, you mm -hmm. have suddenly heavy rains. You know, also more storms, and you know, 
and um, so it can be very hot, you know, uh, in summer, you know, but then also sometimes cool. But it's so it's it's a little bit more extreme. You say the the the, um, the 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 time, the different times in the year, you know, it starts. The spring starts like summer, you know. The summer is like spring, you know, <laughs> you know? and um, winter, this year winter was very mild, you know, sometimes it can be very cold, right. I don't know, it's a little bit, you know, it's the, the, so the, 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 I would say, I think 40, 50, 60 years ago with my parents and my grandparents, you know, there was still, you know, a spring was a spring, a summer was a summer, and a winter was a winter, you know. Right. In winter it was cold and snow, and even the river sometimes froze, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but nowadays we have very cold winters sometimes, and very warm winters. We have springs, which are like the mm -hmm. middle of summer, you know, with 35 degrees Celsius and That's hot, in yeah. April, you know. Mm -hmm. And then and then the whole summer is like spring, slightly cold, you know. and crazy you know so from that point you it's much more uneven you've got okay that is the impression you have you know yeah our winter in texas um definitely was a lot milder yes, you know? <laughs> yes. Um, yes. it was then 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 uh, then it should be um and i talked when i visited some wineries over mm -hmm. the winter um they were kind of concerned about you know getting bud break really early mm. because they also suffer from spring frost very yeah, that easily. Is, that is exactly yeah. what I'm a little bit you know we, we had already some really nice days and the roses have been always budding you know mm -hmm. everything is uh, just just starting quite early you know right but we always had now in the last years always end of March beginning of April a little bit of a kind of a very cold period again you know so for next week, they they say minus temperatures again. You know, really for next yeah, in week in the night. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. It it, it looked so like it minus, wasn't going to rain. Two, minus two, <laughs> minus three. You know, and, in the yeah. night, and then seventeen degrees in the during the day. That is okay. a little bit of an extreme. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. So so that is a little bit. Oh, we we you know it, it, it butt breaks possibly too early, and then there's this you know risk of frost. You know because the because the ice sands that was always in the old days, you know, so where they have been worried, you know, that was in the beginning of May, the ice sands, you know, um, which which always brings frost and cold weather. So that means, look, that is still, I mean, uh, six weeks to go, or eight weeks to go, you mm -hmm. know, so we have still another eight weeks of risk, you know, to, um, for spring frost, that is a new thing for us. I mean, not a new thing. It was in the old days, you know, in the fifties, forties, and fifties and sixties. It was that was still okay. uh, a problem. It was always a problem in these days, you know. But then we didn't had any in the seventies, eighties, nineties, you know. And suddenly we got this problem with the spring frost right, again, yeah. you know. Um, as in as in Burgundy too, you know, Chablis and so. Right. Yeah. yeah. So for that point, we have, well, I don't know, I and mean, we can't beat the. You can't beat the weather anyway, but it is not true. And I have been talking to a journalist yesterday, uh, Os Clark, a very famous journalist mm -hmm. in England, you know, and he had been talking about global warming too. I said, look, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a little bit um, um, astonished, you know, these these growers, they always say, oh, global warming, we can't do anything against it. Now, we have enough tools, viticultural wise, you know, to to adjust, you know, to the to the global warming, you know. Right. I mean, I personally don't think that it makes sense if it is hotter and hotter and hotter. Why to reduce the yield then the whole time? The people always said, "Oh, low yield makes the great best wines." That's true. That was fifty years ago when they couldn't get ripen the grapes. You know, if I can't ripen the grapes, then um, and it's not warm enough, then I better reduce the yield. That the little the little bit we get on the wine, you know get right you know right but if you have heat and 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 warmness again uh, enough and and water enough you know that means reducing in this situation the yield that makes it only overripe you know also one of the reasons for my opinion why they're also ripe you know yeah. because they're all everybody want to hear oh low yield what is the yield and then the people say oh it's only 15 hectares and they think oh that must be the ultimate quality it's <laughs> totally has nothing to do that is such a Bullshit, you know, but yeah. nobody stands up and tells the people this is total bullshit, you know. Low yield, yes, 
I did low yield in the days when we didn't couldn't when we couldn't ripen our fruit. Then mm -hmm. you had to reduce it. That was also also in Bordeaux, you know. Even in Bordeaux, they had in the old days they had been happy to get 10, 11 potential alcohol, you yes. know. And so here it was totally you know clear and I mean it made sense to lower the yield to get rather 12, 12.5% 12 alcohol, you know. But now where we have twice as much sunshine hours, you know, as 50 years ago, you know, or whatever, you know, um, here we can go higher in yield because we want to extend the hang time, you know, mm -hmm. that the wines get more elegant, more, more aroma ripeness and these kind of things, you know, okay. and lower and that they, they you know, if the, 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 if the plant has to put the power into more, pro, uh, uh, um, more grapes, you know, it slows down the ripeness ripening process, you know, mm -hmm. so you can hang it longer, which is very important for the aroma ripeness and, uh, and you don't get that much over ripeness. We do it and we do freezing and washing state, you know, mm -hmm. Eastern Washington. Right. We're Your partnership sorry, with, yeah, with the Chateau Saint Michel. Saint -Michel. Yeah. Sorry, that's a fucking desert, you know, yeah, it and is. <laughs> it is 3,500 sunshine hours, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, three times as much as we have here in the Mosul, you know, here we have been going higher elevation. Know, up to a thousand feet, twelve hundred feet high. You know, mm -hmm. we have been cropping more, higher yield. You know, to slow down. You know, more shading. There's so many tools. You know, to fight. I mean, that is the. I mean, sorry, Washington State is for us the ultimate global warming. You know, right. I mean, we still. I mean, I think we will never reach three thousand five hundred <laughs> sunshine hours here. You know, I mean, <laughs> five hundred years or whatever. You know, I don't know. But I mean, here, but you see, here even here in such an environment, you can make wonderful reasonings if you use the right tools in viticulture. You know, that's the best example. You know. But here, I mean, sometimes the people, the, the crowers, and you hear crowers, oh, oh, I can't do anything. They sit there and wait, and they're doing it as they always did it. Oh, we never harvested before. You know, October. this and that. We October, and we never mm -hmm. harvested. We never did this. We never did that. You know, sorry, folks, no. But it's not 1960. You, yeah. we have to, you have to adjust to what we got nowadays. We have to adjust the viticulture. You have to adjust your winemaking, whatever, you know. So from that point of view, so I'm uh, sure, I mean, global warming is, um, is, is definitely a problem for other reasons, you know. And so not for us as a winemaker. And then the old people said, oh, what are you doing in the future? You have to grow Syrah or whatever, you know. <laughs> then, man, God, you know. Why are people all panicking? I mean, they're all panicking, you know? I mean, sure, I mean, it's we know that, that it creates a lot of other problems, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, but uh, and we definitely have to fight, you know, global warming um, to do something about our environments, you know? But, uh, but it is not the way that we can't produce wine anymore here, you know? Right. Because of global warming, you know? Yeah, exactly. I, I totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in, not that I was ever a, a global warmer, warming denier or anything, mm -hmm. but I was very skeptical 10-ish mm -hmm. mm -hmm. or so years ago. And um, I've been doing this show for 10 years yeah. and talking with people like you mm -hmm. over these over mm -hmm. the years. And especially I've, been, I've traveled mm -hmm. you know, different places. Mm -hmm. It's evident. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm Absolutely talking to evident. people that are yeah. farming the grapes. So it's mm -hmm. not just reading in a book somewhere, you know? Yes. So, so now we have... No, 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 okay. So now we had we had the blue slate. Mm -hmm. Now we do just the, the just the opposite. Now we do the Würzgarten, which means spice garden, okay. the spice garden vineyard, you know, which is from this red volcanic soil. You see, okay. we had the blue slate for the Vela Nazarenor, the Sunday vineyard. Now we have with the spice garden the red volcanic soil, and uh, you see quite a quite a difference um, with. Um, uh, with with the wine, you know, spice okay. garden. It's it's the name because of the vineyard. These volcanic soil gives you different aroma structures. You see, the the Vienna was more fruit based, a little bit mm -hmm. of white peach, like a little bit of green apple, and so. Now you have much more herbal, spicy, yeah. soily aromas. Yeah. You know, in the nose, you know. Yeah, even almost a little peppery. Yes, yeah. yes, all kind of, you know. Um, so slightly spice, herbal, uh, um, soily aromas, you know, and also in the palate, you know, 
and it's much more you know it seems to be more 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 bigger richer mm -hmm. more powerful in the in the you know and also here more herbal and soily in taste not as much fruit driven as the the Velna, you know and so it's just that's the pendant to to flu slate as fruit driven this is more spicy more herbal you know okay. more powerful it seems to even not powerful by more alcohol it's the same alcohol in both the wine making is exactly the same you know um these are 100 year old uncrafted wines you know a uh, slightly younger vineyard than the 130 year old wines you know but this is, as I said, if this, if the Villa Zon was a ballerina, you know, mm -hmm. then what's the Woods Garden is rather a wrestler. You know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, again, amazing wine. Um, yeah, I definitely get it's not as fruit driven. It's more mm. uh, non-fruit, more spice driven. Um, yeah. And it's great. And this is from Erdzig. Erdzig is yeah. the village, you know, mm -hmm. and Wurz Garden, Spice Garden. Wurz okay. is spice. Garden, garden, okay. you know, spice garden when you're, you know, like, like Gewürztraminer. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. Gewürz, <laughs> yeah. Gewürz and Würz is the same. Yeah, you know? yeah. Würz and Gewürz is the same. Okay. Gewürz is also spices, you know. Right. Gewürz yeah. is spices. Würz is spices. Spices. Spices, you know. I know a thing or two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I surprise myself sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I sell myself so mm -hmm. short a lot. I try to. Mm -hmm. Come across as maybe not as smart about one as I actually am. <laughs> it's, it's, it's to like not it's, it's to not um, come across as the snooty psalm mm. uh, blah blah blah. You know. Yeah. No, At the end of the I day, mean, it's, it's yes, wine yes, and, yes, and yes, it's yes, yes. delicious mm. to drink. Mm. And who cares how much I know yes, versus uh, somebody else? So. Uh, <laughs> I just I, I, if I like it. That's all that matters. It's no yeah. competition. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's not. I, I know At the end of I, the day, you have to enjoy it. You know, yeah, you have to absolutely. enjoy wine. You know, I mean, it's all you can. Talk, what, what does it matter if you talk about wine and this is this and this and this and this if you don't like it, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, only to describe a wine doesn't make it uh, more tasty, you know? If, if it is, if you don't like it, you know? And then you know you have so many styles of wines anyway nowadays, you know? I mean, there's the natural wines, the orange wines, you mm -hmm. know, which, which, I mean, I've, I mean, but even here with orange and natural wines, you have so many different styles. You have ones which I like very much, and ones which I, oh God, hate them. You know, it's yeah. horrible. You know, so from that point of view, but it's also a category, you know, which can do everything. You know, from wines which are quite nice and pleasant, you know, which say suits more my taste. You know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say the wines which I don't like from orange wines. And not, that has nothing to do with quality. It's not my taste. It's not your you know? taste, yeah. It's not my taste. That is, it's not a, uh, it's not a qualification, you know. And I don't want to criticize these wines, you know. But I couldn't drink them because it's not my taste. I mean, that is the good thing that everybody has his own taste, you know. Otherwise, we would all drink the same thing, you know. Exactly. You know, over, over mm -hmm. the years, just my experience in, in the industry is that, you know, yeah, same thing. I may not personally like that wine. Mm -mm. But I can recognize this quality. Mm. I can recognize that, it, that it's, it's made mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, it's just maybe it's not to my style. But somebody's mm -hmm. gonna like mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. and and more power to them, you know. And, yeah. just, and on, the, on the reverse, they may hate a wine that I love. And, and again, and all I, things are equal. I, 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 tell, I tell everybody he should believe in his own judgment. You know. Yeah. I mean, drink what you like. You know, and uh, don't. I mean, and even if somebody comes. A, critics or sommelier and said oh you have to drink that tell the people well okay it might be a great wine for you but i don't like it you know i would rather like to drink this wine or this wine because mm -hmm. these wines i like you know and i think the people should stand up you know a lot of people are so frightened oh he's a sommelier he knows so much more you know everybody has his own taste you know and everybody can judge his own taste you know um there's a, amazing sometimes you know especially with women i always see it you know i mean at the very beginning with my wife too um and so you know we sitting there for hours and you know tasting back and forward doing 20 point scale and so you know mm -hmm. and we need then four hours you know to think um oh this is supposed to be the best wine from the 20 wines which we mm -hmm. taste the blind now my wife comes you know taste them and said oh this is the best wine well, women are and just then we look, yeah. when we women look at, oh, oh, really good tasters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, from that point of view, you know, so from that point of view, you know, I mean, that is, uh, you know, I mean, people should stick to, um, should, I mean, sure, you can always want to learn, but I mean, sometimes they are too dogmatic, you know, some sommeliers sometimes, you know, they want to push you to drink this wine because it's often only because it's very fashionable now to drink mm -hmm. orange wine or so, you know, but they should keep the people, I mean, they should 
give the people what they want to drink, you know. And sure, and if somebody is open and said, oh, yeah, can, okay, I want to taste, can I taste it? But if he says, no, I don't like it, you know, then they should bring him what he likes, you know. Because it will be an enjoyable, you know, you want to have a nice evening. And he has to pay for it anyway. Exactly. So, you know, one of my previous jobs, hmm. um, I had a lady ask for a white Zinfandel. Hmm. Hmm. And there was two other guys at the table. They were like, I oh. can't believe you have white Zinfandel. Because it was a high-end steakhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Why there's not? a market Why not? for it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there are I, people who want to drink what, it and they like it. If, but like it's it not right. our cup of tea. But if yeah. these people like it and want to drink it with their steak, well, hey, everybody can do whatever you like. Yeah. You know? yeah. The uh, and this is now the same Erzgebet's garden, But okay. this is made now in a very historic style. You know? Okay. And this wine was produced exactly as my great grandfather made dry wines. You know. Okay. It's Wurzgarten, like the wine you had beforehand. We call it reserve. You know. Okay. Because this wine was also fermented on indigenous yeast, on the natural yeast, in the barrel. You know, in the Buddha barrel, but stays two years in the barrel. Okay. And another, you know, three years in the bottle before we release it. You know. Okay. So that means uh, we keep it two years on the full yeast in the in the barrel. You know. And then we bottle it, and then we keep it three years before we release it. You know, so that's the reason it's called reserve. But you see, what does it, what does it do? This longer aging in the barrel on the full yeast makes it so much more charming. You know, it's a great, yeah. great aromatic. You know, great wonderful aromatic. You yes, know, very aromatic. Yeah, very aromatic it's and gets very charming also in the mouth. And the mouth feel is a beautiful. It has get some. Even though this is also a dry wine, it gets extract sweetness, you know? Yeah. That there is a sweetness coming only by the winemaking, you know? It's not residual sweetness, it's a certain what we call extract sweetness, you know, which comes out, you know? And it's very harmonious, very charming, beautiful to drink, you know, absolutely gorgeous, you know. So that was basically the this is how wines have been produced hundred and twenty years ago. Okay. That was this is exactly you can imagine. How did wines taste 120 years ago? This is the way. That's exactly made uh, as they did it 120 years ago. And this is this oh, is so. spectacular. And he's even got and some. Of the, we call it reserve. Then we got uh, a little bit of that wax characteristic mm, yeah, to it. Um, right, so I don't know what's like here with zoos, but where, when I grew up, mm -hmm. you had these little machines that would create wax animals. And so mm -hmm. as, you, as soon as you get it out of the machine, that the, the wax is still mm -hmm. warm, mm -hmm. and you get uh, Riesling in general. I get mm -hmm. that a lot, but this mm -hmm. it's really there. Mm -hmm. You get that like warm, just fresh out of the vending machine wax animal, you mm -hmm. know, type of thing. Not necessarily a candle wax thing, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's um, yeah. I mean, neither we called it. Ah, can get, ah, can mm -hmm. Okay, can yeah. Um, and you were talking about that that you said that extraction sweetness. Um, you know, when I talk with people about wine, they go, I want a sweet wine, but a lot of times they don't really mean sweet. They just mean lots of fruit characteristic to it, you yeah, know. Fruit or complexity, you yeah. know, a wine which is complex and, you know, very much. Or maybe together, they do want that 30 mm. grams per liter residual know, sugar, sure. you know. I don't know. <laughs> but, I don't know. Well, so, yeah, so for, I'm, look, everybody else here likes it, you know. Yeah. I mean, there are people. Drink, you know, people those... drink Coca Cola and other people drink yeah. only water, you know. And yeah. so, you know, so from that point of view, whatever people like, you know, um, but um, but this is a dry wine mm -hmm. which is very round and harmonious, you know, and works very well with um, with you know, food with creamy sauces and so, you know, something right. like you know. Um, or fish in a in a beurre blanc, you know, or something like that, you know, that works very well with yeah. it, you know. And this is delicious wine. Mm -hmm. All the wines are delicious. Mm -hmm. I mean, none of these are none of these are bad. But wines it's at all. quite interesting, and it's the same vineyard, you know. Mm -hmm. It's the same yeah. parcel, even. It's the same parcel, even, you know. Um, right. And some of the fruit we keep one year in the barrel, and some of the fruit we keep two years in the barrel. And we have the same also, and some of the fruit we keep three years in the barrel, you know. Okay. And that's called homage, but this wine is not yet out, you know. Okay. Because homage is three years in the barrel on the full yeast and seven years in the bottle. Wow. You know? um, was there anything significantly different with these two vintages? Um, or are they close enough? No, you know, 13 no, and 17? no, they're very close vintages. Okay. Also lower yield in 13, you know. Okay. But therefore, this was possibly uh, 13, uh, we had a little bit more botrytis, you know. But it doesn't matter because we take the botrytis out mm -hmm. anyway for the dry wines. Right. From that point of view, it's only healthy fruit every year, right. you know. 
So because I would try to select carefully select it out okay. to make Nelbit sweet wines, you know. Spectacular. Or or wunderbar as you would say, mm, right? Wunderbar, yes. I, I, that's one of my favorite words, honestly, mm. is is that one. Uh -huh. um, so um, when when so when you came in, yes, mm. I was going to say outstanding because mm. that is literally my mm. my word. Mm. I use that word for everything. Mm. Mm. Um, I don't know what the equivalent is in German, in but in but uh, wunderbar is close enough for me. Mm. So. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I see. So the the prowet, right? Huh? With that story it's about ah, the, the that is uh, no that no no well, it was, it was on your it was on the carrier. The ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the prelot. Yes. Prelot, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, so exactly. quick, tell the tell us the story about that. Oh, <laughs> about about the getting thrown. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> well, this, this is hardcore. Hammer and Gold. Soll ich noch einen holen? Ja, ist man dann einer auf? Ich äh, guck mal, äh, Goldkapsel oder sowas, ne? Ja. Um, uh, so we tell the story when we taste the wine. I think mm. it makes more sense, you know, to have it with the with okay with the wine. Oh. Yeah, it was. Um, we'll, we'll get to the story, but I was. It was pretty shocking to hearing this story. Um, yeah, it's the old stories. Yeah. 10, 10, 1066, you know? When, wow. Yeah. Cool. Some amazing. time ago. <laughs> See, now the sun's behind yes. behind the hill. And the light's great now. Yes. Very nice. Very anyway. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's the joys of doing, of yes. doing, these, doing these things. Um, you can't see on the camera, but I've got uh -huh. the iPad here. This is this is basically I've uh -huh. shown points. This is my monitor, so I can uh -huh. see what's going on. Yes, I can make sure that we're still recording uh -huh. and that you know the, the light's good and all that. Yes, um, the wonders of technology, especially because like my phone is my camera. Yes, like I have a video camera at home. Uh -huh. I use I like that I like the video camera at home better uh -huh. than this. Uh -huh. uh, I just I feel I have better control over everything, uh -huh. um, or it just I don't know. It seems like it looks better. I also have a green screen behind me. I mean, I get fancy, um, but on the road, I've this, I've I've switched to using my phone as my camera the last the couple of years. Yeah, um, last couple of years, and it just it works wonderful. I, I love how it how it does everything for me. Yeah. So now we had been we tasted the first time the first three wines, yes. or four wines have mm -hmm. been dry wines, you know, and now we are switching over to the to the fruity style wines, you know. Which are then all predicat wines, you know. I told you Cabernet Sauvignon mm -hmm. is always on the fruity style with some rich okay. sweetness, you know. So now we're switching over to the fruity style. Okay. The first one is a Grand Cru vineyard, red slate soil, you know. Um, it's called Erdener Treppchen. Treppchen means the little staircase vineyard, you know. Okay. Because you saw possibly those little staircases in the vineyard. Yeah, there, is it? we were over there. Yeah. Yeah, you see these, these little staircases in yes. the vineyard that gave the name to the vineyard. You know? Yeah, and then there's a little the little the, park thing too. Yes, that's the uh, the monorail. The monorail, yeah, yeah. I took some pictures of that. Yes, and I'll have pictures, you know, from the the places mm. we were in uh, uh, while we're doing it. So this is now a traditional cabinet, you know. So okay. I mean, early harvested, you know. So that means early harvested. That's always in the first week or two weeks of the harvest. We crop this fruit, you know. Um, when the harvest starts, because here then uh, the, the 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 potential sugar ripeness, you know, potential alcohol sugar ripeness is still only around ten percent, you know. Okay. So uh, we can't harvest everything at the same time, you know. So from that point of view, we need six weeks to harvest all our grapes. So it's in the in 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 in, in the logic of nature. If I start picking, the fruit is less ripe, potential sugar ripe, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, as the fruit which I picked six weeks later, you know, with six weeks more hang time and more sunshine, the fruit right. every every day ripens a little bit more, you know, produces a little bit more sugar, you know, a little bit more um, sugar ripeness every day, you know. But I can't <coughs> harvest everything at once, you know. You don't but, have enough room in the winery to, to do it. Well, all. I don't have the people too. <laughs> don't have the people, right? Yeah. Six hours. If I want to. If I want to pick all my vineyards in one week, I would need 600 people oh, picking yeah. grapes, you know, yeah. the whole day, you know, it's logistically impossible. We, I mean, we can logistically, we can manage 40 pickers, 40 to 50 people in the vineyard, okay. you know, that is the maximum we can logistically handle, you know, but that means we need six weeks to pick the grapes, you know, so from that point of view, um, it's, it's in the logic of natural rightness, you know, that 
the stuff which when we start picking the fruit is less sugar ripe as at the end you know right so in the, in the beginning the sugar ripeness of the grapes are around 10 percent potential alcohol sugar ripeness okay. or 10.5 it depends you know and this fruit we use for the cabinet fruity style because okay. here the the sugar is low the acidity is high and here it makes sense to keep a little bit of residual sweetness to balance the balance acidity, acidity yeah. and this has this nice tension between acidity and residual sweetness no? yeah and that makes it only seven and a half percent or eight percent alcohol then yeah you know? I mean that's that's I mean and any any beverage like this. Mm -hmm. I mean Coke is a mm -hmm. perfect example. Yeah. A lot of residual sugar yeah. a and lot. a lot of acid. Yeah, yeah, a exactly. lot yeah. of acid. It's, it's, so it's, it's exactly. Otherwise that's, it would just be undrinkable. Yeah, that yeah. Is, yeah. well I mean so, sugar water. Uh, yeah. Sugar water, yeah, yeah. And, and this is and Coca Cola has uh, I think nearly uh, five to six times more residual sweetness sugar as yeah. this one, you know. But the same thing for just you know any old you know, any any dessert wines from anywhere in the world. Mm. Usually you have a higher acid, higher acidity yeah. to balance mm. with mm. the sugar level mm. in, in that in that dessert wine. Mm. You know the sugar's there, but it's it's not it's not. No, I mean, it's, it's awful kind of, sweet. No, no, it's, it's not sweet, like no, sweet no. sweet, but no, it's no. just like. No, it's, it's kind just of, enough. It's kind of hitting your tongue, but then the acidity is kind kind of drying it off of yeah. your of, of your tongue. Yeah, it, it yeah. yeah, it's it's still easy to drink. It's it's refreshing. Mm, yeah, refreshing. You know? very, very, yeah, very, you know, it's yeah. like biting in a cream fresh apple. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Very much like that. Very much like just mm. a fresh green apple. Yes. Uh, and then yeah. you don't want to have it acidic and, and sour, you know? Right. You want the sweetness with this green apple. You mm -hmm. have this kind of refreshing, you know, I mean, acidity with the green apple, but the sweetness, which which makes this beautiful balance, you know? Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, very much. Very, very refreshing, very refreshing style. And then next to it, we have then what the next step that is mm -hmm. basically the ladder of the predicate, you know. Uh, the first step in the predicate uh, system is cabinet, you know. Right. Which is harvested, as I said, with us 10, 10.5 potential alcohol and sugar ripeness, okay. you know. Then the next step in the ladder is spätlese, which mm -hmm. means later harvested. Spät okay. means later. Laser means harvested, Harvest. mm -hmm. so it's later harvested as cabinet. Why? Because, as I said, with more hang time, you get more sugar ripeness, more aroma ripeness. You know, so if you harvest later, you have a later harvested fruit. This is usually harvested a week later or okay, uh, ten days later than cabinet. You know, something like that. You know, um, and then with the higher, little bit higher sugar ripeness. Here we talk about. 10.5 to 11.5 potential alcohol sugar okay. ripeness, you know. Um, the aroma ripeness is also higher. With the cabinet, you have rather the green apple, you know. Early harvested green apple. Here with the Spätlese, we have rather have the white peach yes. and peach, you know. Mm -hmm. So that is how the, the with, with more hang time and more ripeness, it goes from the beginning, from green aroma, you know, from green aromas like green apple, you know into yellows from green stone aroma into yellow stone aroma you know okay and between is the white peach then it goes yellow peach then it goes apricot you know more and more in this kind of direction you know so with with this um so when you're going going up, up the scale in the product um so you harvested you know earlier and then you're harvesting a little bit later um are you doing anything to arrest the fermentation to leave that residual sugar, are you? Yeah, yeah. Well, the residual sweetness, yes. We, okay. we to keep the residual sweetness in the wine, we stop the fermentation with okay. cabinet spirit as the as We right. stop the fermentation. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's as far as like where that's being stopped. Each winery is going to make their decisions. Like this, the winemaker no, does the decision. Yeah. He, there's no he, like. He finds he, he looks for the balance, you know. Yeah. He looks for the balance, you know. If it's if it's a spate laser, it's not it's not like a required like grams per liter. No. Sure, it just it's just you're you're looking for it's, a balance and a taste. Yeah, it's only on the balance. You okay. Know? So we reduced in the last years the residual sweetness levels of carbon edge beta and house laser. Mm -hmm. We have been going lower again, you know, because it was there was a time and you know everything. It's fashion and it's right. Journalists, which uh, have a huge influence to <laughs> winemaking too, right. you know, as you know, and ratings, you know, mm -hmm. and so I thought, and especially in the late 90s, 2000s, you know, 
um, you know, as sweet as the wine was, as high as the ratings, you know. But I think that was going, from my opinion, in the wrong direction, you know, sweeter, 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 you know. Right. Um, so we, 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 since 10 years, we lower now every year again, back to the traditional style of Rishita sweetness, you know. Right. So we think that makes it's better balance for the wine, you know, because the wines have been, for my opinion, have been going a little bit out of balance because they have been, for, 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 for me, a lot of people have been going too sweet, you know. Okay, yeah. they got great ratings, you know. We are going lower with the with the with the with the with the residual sweetness now, you know. Um, okay, you don't get the ratings anymore, you no. Know, but I'm don't Pretty care sure anymore. I'm old enough balance, now. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. But you know, but you know, in, the, in your country, ratings are very important. You know? Well, I stopped giving ratings uh, yeah, yeah, seven, yeah. six, seven years ago. Yeah. I used to give oh, ratings. Really, yeah. I used to I used to rate all the mm -hmm. wines I would mm -hmm. I would do reviews mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. um, and but I found that part of it was probably even my confidence in my mm. legitimacy of a, as a wine reviewer um, that I almost all my wines were anywhere between 85 and 89, mm. which made no sense because mm. then why do I even have a rating system? Yeah. So I just say whether I like the wine or not, and I try to evaluate the wine on its mm -hmm. merits, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether I like it or not, mm -hmm. because I know, like we discussed earlier, well, it's, anyway, it not may a, not be my style, well, but I can see that someone's well, going to like this. So yeah. it's Anyway, not a an, an 100 point system because it's not. people look only from 90 <laughs> upwards, you know? Yeah. As soon as the wine is 85, you know? Then the people think is a disgusting and undrinkable wine. And it's not. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> it's so one that, so from that point of view, yeah. the rating is only going from eighty-five to hundred. Yeah. Know? yeah. Well, I never. Did yeah. you ever saw a wine which was sixty or eighty? I or, might have given a couple ratings <laughs> lower than than eighty-five, but but were those wines truly that rating? Mm, Looking yes. back, maybe not. Maybe yeah, but just, I mean, but you don't never. I never saw fifty or yeah. sixty or sixty-five, you seen, you know? yeah, or twenty. A, or you, you never yeah. see a wine rating that low in, in a publication. No. Yeah, you know they, well, the lowest which I saw was I think once uh, something like eighty or eighty-one or yeah. something like that. You know. But so from that point of view, yeah. Yeah, it's a 20-point system. But yeah. even the 20-point system is also not a 20-point system. Because <laughs> yeah, I never saw a wine with 9 or 10. No, <laughs> no? right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, for me, I just kind of felt the rating system on my end of things mm. and how I was viewing the wines, mm. I thought was just very... Mm. It just wasn't good, and I switched to just I like the wine or not. I call it the Siskel and Ebert, mm. you know, the famous wine of, of movie critics. Mm. They would they would each say they'd either give it a thumb up or a thumb down. Yeah. I mean, it's only me, so I'd only mm. have one. But I don't even I don't even use that since I just say I like it. I don't like it, um, and but if I don't like it. This is why the wine is still good. It's mm. just maybe not my right. style. Exactly. Yeah, it's you more know? description. And, and then styles, there was the funny thing. Yeah. Even with Parker, if they didn't get the highest points or something like, so if you had eighty-seven or mm -hmm. or eighty-eight or even eighty-six, if but but no nobody had been reading through his uh, description, you know. Right. And Read the description. he described. Yeah. But then he and the description looked very very nice, even mm -hmm. that it was only eighty six, you know. So that is the funny thing. But that people look only on the number, you know. And then the description was maybe quite nice, you know, of Parker. So from that point right. of view, um, it's a little bit, uh, yeah, one dimensional, you know, a little exactly. one dimensional. Exactly. You know? um, yeah, I, that's why I just I stopped doing mm -hmm. it. Um, but yeah, it's 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 hearing it's it's reading or hearing the the description. Mm -hmm. Um, because just like movies, you know. In the old days, the English journalists only described wines. They never yeah, gave ratings. No ratings, you know? yeah. In Decanter, in the old Decanter magazines, that was only described the wines, you know. And then they started with a star point, a star mm -hmm. system or whatever, you know. So. All right. This is now the Erna Prelat. There you go. <laughs> um, this is now the Erna Pralat, which is our most finest vineyard. You, you have been there, you know? Yeah, we saw it there. We saw a that. small vineyard, there's only four <laughs> acres, you know, um, the whole vineyard. And um, so we are the largest owner there with one and a half acre, more than one and a half acre. Um, and, uh, and I told you about the three microclimate factors. Mm -hmm. the, the, the prelate has the perfect micro, three microclimate. It's 100% south facing, it's 100% steep, and it's 
only on the river embankment, very low elevation. Right. But the Prela is the only one which has a fourth microclimate, you know? And that is, when you saw, it's completely surrounded by these massive cliffs, you know, these amazingly massive cliffs, you know, I don't know, right. you know, um, you know? Um, and that probably protects the vineyards, you know, like an amphitheater, you know? Right, yeah. And this gives the wine, I mean, it protects it from cold winds and so, you know, protects the whole vineyard. So that makes the vineyard, there you go. Oh, yeah, here you go. You see, it's like a microclimate, you know, like an, like an, Amphitheater, you know, mm -hmm. and so and that protects the whole vineyard from and it's hundred percent south facing, close to the river, you know, very low elevation, you know, hundred percent steepness, and then these huge, massive cliffs, you know, which surrounds the, the prelate, gives it um, a fourth microclimate, and that is basically the warmest vineyard, first bud break every year, first you know flowering every year, first variation mm -hmm. you know, every year, you know, and so yeah, and the and the story in this vineyard, you know was um, the bishop, you know, the prince bishop and uh, archbishop of, of Trier, you know, he, um, he traveled uh, on the Mosul to the residence, to his residence, to Trier, uh, that was 1066, 1066 was another famous number, William the Conqueror, okay. had been going to England, 1066, no? the, um, um, uh, and he had been traveling on the Mosul, and there was a big castle on top of these cliffs I showed you, you know, a huge robbery yeah. knight castle, you know, from the robbery knights, you know. And they thought, oh, it might be a clever idea, you know, to kidnap this old bishop. He was the most powerful bishop in these days and the richest too, you know. Let's kidnap the bishop, you know, and ask for a big fat ransom, you know. So they kidnapped him, put him up to the, <laughs> to the castle. Mm -hmm. But it seems that the bishop didn't have too many friends in the residence because the <laughs> ransom was never paid, you know, never showed up, you know, and they had been feeding this guy for one year or more, you know. <laughs> uh, nowadays you would say a bad investment, you know. Right. Um, and so, and then the people have been so upset about it, you know, that they never get the ransom, you know, that they tear them up to the highest tower and throw him down there, you know. And that is where he ended up, you know. And the legend even says that they tear him up a second time and throw him down a second time, you know, uh, because they had been <laughs> they, they had been pretty, pretty, pretty upset about this. Yeah. Um, um, but then I think the next bishop, a few years later, um, um, completely destroyed the castle to the to to to, to the to the crown. You know, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's the reason you don't see anything anymore. You know, because you know that in these days the the church was the authority, right? And they couldn't accept, you know, that there is anybody, you know, uh, disrespect their authority, you know, so even that possibly the next bishop didn't like the previous one, but to, 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 to manifest his power, you know, he had, I mean, he completely destroyed the castle okay. and I mean, possibly killed all these guys too. From, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, from that point of view, that is the story about the, 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 the vineyard, you know, and so yeah. and the prelate is the romanticized, you know, version, you know, <laughs> from the romantic because the prelate vineyard uh, was called uh, just it's not that old uh, it was a trademark of a of a, of a on a monopole vineyard of a, an old family you know who got the trademark of that in 1890 or something like that you know that was in the romantic time you know mm -hmm. they, they, they they called it in prelate you know okay and so um from that point of view um yeah uh, and this is now an auslaser the next step you know right but here we already use all the grapes which we sort out, which we don't use for dry wines. Here we choose the grapes with which has already botrytis, botrytis, you know, mm -hmm. noble rot, you know. You you see, uh, you see it here. So we we cut, you know, we cut all the, you know, we take mm -hmm. all the botrytis out, you know. Here the healthy grapes, as you know, you see here. Um, you see, as soon we have botrytis, you know, like here, you see. We right. take the protritus out, you know, and put it here into this red bucket and white buckets, you know, and then um, that is the Auslese, because Auslese means selection. Okay. And it is a selection. It's a selection of protritus ice fruit, you know. Okay. Selection of botrytis ice fruit, and that is, um, and that's, and so from that, that is the ladder now. We had a cabinet. 
We have the spät laser, later harvested, mm -hmm. and the aus laser, which is selection, where we select the botrytisized fruit okay. for this kind of, which is then the noble sweet wine. Okay. This is, and you see in here, which is very typical for the botrytis, for the for the noble rotten grape, honey. Yes. No? A little honey, bit of honey character, yeah. Honey is always due to botrytis. Mm -hmm. If you have honey, it's always related to botrytis. Yeah. You know, in a wine. That's the mm -hmm. one thing that we look for. We smell mm -hmm. any honey. Mm -hmm. We, you know, when we're when we're doing mm -hmm. our blind tasting, mm -hmm. the world got really small, mm -hmm. really quickly. Mm -hmm. There's only a few things that this could be, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, and then it's just now, it's, and now it's the character of the, the rest of the characters of the wine that give you mm -hmm. what, what's, what's the grape, mm -hmm. and once you have that, you know where you're at, so. Yes, yeah. It's not a parlor trick. Mm -hmm. It takes practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and we get wrong. We get it wrong a lot of times too. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, honey is absolutely there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just a honey character to it. Yes. Well, that comes from the botrytis. Mm -hmm. You know, that is definitely due to the botrytis. You know, because it's a it's a hundred percent botrytis selection. This this Auslese. We call it Auslese Gold Capsule. You know, Auslese okay. Gold Capsule means a normal Auslese, which is a white capsule. Is 50% botrytis influence. Okay. 100% uh, gold capsule is with us. 100% botrytis okay. uh, influence. You know? All right. Mm. Yeah. Good to know that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quiz later. No. Yes. <laughs> Makes it more expensive too. <laughs> yes, it does. I mean, I mean, your mm. it's selection. Your your the grapes have botrytis on it. Mm. You know, it's 100%. So I mean, your your yield is going to be lower. No, this oh, is. Oh, I mean, yeah. the total production of this is only um, 100 cases. Yeah. That's it. You know? that, that's, yeah. Thank that's, you. That's a hundred, <laughs> only 100 cases. That's every year. It, we, we, it depends on the year. Between mm -hmm. 50 and 100 cases, you know? Wow, yeah. We produce all this way. You know? Yeah. Every year. That's it. You know? That's what, that's, you know, because you select it out, you know? Exactly. And then in the botrytis grapes, there's not much juice in there, you know, because it's shriveled, you know? Right. Yeah, I was, I was telling you, um, I, I went to uh, Bordeaux mm. during harvest, which was the crazy part. But but I got to I got to um, see some stuff, and I went to Sancerre and Barsac, and I got to taste botrytis grapes mm. at one of the one of the chateau I went to. Mm -hmm. It was spectacular. I was mm. like, this is so cool that I'm getting to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I tell people all the time I lead a charm life. You know wh why I'm leading a charm life? Because I'm sitting with these two gentlemen here. <laughs> we're taking, we've, we've taken a lot of their time. Graciously, they're giving me this time, and we've tasted through a pretty... I haven't had this many wines in, in an interview in a long time. You know, I just I let them they decide what they want to do. I don't give any. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to have like this many wines and it has to be this. Um, but yeah, so going into, mm -hmm. into Bordeaux, and it's only Riesling we have. It's only Riesling <laughs> we haven't even gotten the other stuff, which you know. Um, but uh, you know, just going in, going to these areas um, is educational for me. It mm -hmm. helps me understand these things. But yeah, having people give their time. To me, freely mm. um, is just is you know is humbling a lot of times. You mm -hmm. know, especially mm -hmm. when I'm able to, to meet with some pretty iconic producers. <laughs> so you know, yeah. um, and I do meet with a lot of really good producers. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I I meet with a lot of different producers, but you know, I've definitely met with some icons mm -hmm. out there. So, and this is definitely one of those times. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is this is um, outstanding here. I'm gonna drink the rest of this. Yes. Let's spit it, okay? Absolutely. And it's only what we're talking about here. Uh, it's only nine percent. Nine percent. Nine percent. You know. And I'm I'm literally going across the river. Well, yeah. to to v v yeah. Valen. Next next village. Yeah. Uh, next river. River. yeah. yeah I'm going uh, there. Valen, so in Valen, yeah. Um, uh, Airbnb. Uh, Airbnb. Yeah, oh, he's okay. actually probably expecting me soon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him I'd be finishing up around six o'clock here, and okay, it's just okay. after six. So, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, uh -huh. but yeah. Uh, though then again, he hasn't really contacted me. I've contacted him a couple times. So there's hotels around. I'll, I'll find some place. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I drove by uh, a whole bunch. Well, <laughs> probably he lives right next door. So yeah. He yeah. Lives right next door, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so uh -huh. uh, this is my first experience with Airbnb here, and then also in Dusseldorf. I'm staying uh, in the trade, Airbnb near, near the uh, near the uh, trade fair because uh, oh, okay. um, uh, that's where I'm going. I leave uh, Saturday to go back up to Dusseldorf. Uh, uh, so, so I had a couple comments about my wine shirt, um, <laughs> um, and uh, so when I was doing the currency exchange, um, uh, the lady was like, "Oh, well, wine." I said, "Well, that's why I'm here in Dusseldorf is for Provine." She was like, "Oh, I'm like, yeah, it's like this is not just some funny shirt I'm wearing. Like, this is, you know, I mean." 
Star Wars, yeah, it's just, it just was a funny shirt, you know. But yes, yes yeah. I like drinking wine. But I'm also going to have a lot of beer here Ooh. because why not have some cool beer? Um, it's, yeah, and <laughs> we keep it very much like the Australian winemakers. It takes a lot of beer to make great wines. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and, you know, and we, we do also beer. Yeah, Losenbroy. Oh, okay. We do our own beer. So I should look uh, for that. We have, yeah, well, it's not out yet because oh, okay. uh, it's it's we just commercialized, you know. Okay. Um, it's Losenbroy. It's a bottle fermented, you know, beer. Oh, cool. you know, bottle right. fermented beer. So um, yes, it's nice. It's a yeah. what we call it Keller beer. It's a lighter style, you know. Okay. But with the yeast and everything in there. Yeah. One of the jokes in the psalm world is, mm -hmm. uh, and, and winemakers too, at least in the United States, is mm -hmm. what do you do after drinking wine all day? You drink yes. beer. beer. Yes, and you absolutely. drink bitter. You drink IPAs and bitter beers. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I like those. Or some well, like to drink the gronies, and I, I, I've said it a million yes. times on my yeah. show, I'm not a grony fan, well, but okay, um, yes. well, it's okay. I like the lager style, Keller beer, yeah, I like wheat beer, and, and this kind of stuff, and, you know, yeah. and yeah. wheat, yeah. you know, and so after, because it's good against the thirst. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really good. So I'm, I'm excited. Not that we don't have beer in the United States and not that we don't have German beer mm. over there, but it's going to be different. You know, I'm going to be exposed to stuff that yeah. I've never seen yeah. before yeah. Um, that, I, you know, I'll definitely try. I mean, I only have a few days and I only have so many mm. hours a day to do mm. stuff, so mm -hmm. I can't get crazy. But, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah. that's a cool one. I'll try mm. that. You mm -hmm. know? And that's how, that's how I drink wine, too. Mm. Um, I drink. I try to drink different wines all the time, mm, mm. you know, because I want that experience of trying something new and different to me. Um, and that's how I, that's how I, all, almost every beverage is like, I see mm. a cool cocktail or a new, a new mm. uh, liquor I've never had. Let me try that. Mm, so mm. I, 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 I like to try new stuff. Mm. Expand good. the palate. Yeah. John, I think we're, we're done. We're good. Yeah. Thanks. So, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks, man. Both of you yeah, for, you're welcome. for taking all this time with me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we'll end the show. So uh, as always, just uh, go to the website. There's links. Eventually on my YouTube side, I'll get all those like stuff that everybody else does. I'm just really basic on YouTube. But go to the website. There's links about to, to friend me up. They'll have links to everything that we did here today uh, down below uh, in the description and over at the website. And um, yeah, thank you all for stopping by and we'll see everyone again next time.